Well, welcome everyone. We're excited to be here with you today to talk about adding real-time data into your apps. I'm here with my colleague, Dan Roney, and you wanna introduce yourself quick, Dan? Yeah, hi, I'm a program manager on the Fluid Framework platform team. I'm here to talk to you about Fluid Framework a little bit today. Um, I'm really in charge of our partner outreach on the team, so looking forward to getting the message out there. Excellent. And I'm Dan Wallin again. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And like you said, we're really excited to talk about the data aspect of collaboration. And that's really what Dan and I are going to focus on. So when it comes to real-time data collaboration, there are some challenges. First off, you have to pick the right technology, of course. But even once you start to send data across multiple clients, there's a lot of challenges that can come in. And Dan's going to talk about that in just a moment. But why would we want to collaborate? Well, let's say Anna and Kevin are working together, and maybe they're working on an app that's one step above Hello World, a to-do app. And you can see that they can add in some different items here. So Dan, what are some of the challenges that come in as we work with this type of application though? Well, when you've got an app like this and you've got multiple people manipulating the data at the same time, it can get tricky to, to make sure that all the users are having the same experience. And so, and you've got maybe two users editing the same piece of text or they're moving content around independently. You wanna make sure that everybody's seeing things in a similar way. And this is where the really the sequence of the edits comes into play. Exactly, and I kind of think of it like, you know, Word Online or Google Docs or something like that, they get it right. But to do that on our own is a little bit challenging for sure. So this does seem like something you could build with WebSockets though, right? Well, yes and no, right? I think that's the first thing that, that comes to mind with most people is, you know, we get a web app out there and then we set up a server. So we have maybe a WebSocket client and it communicates with a WebSocket service. And that is great when the data just needs to flow and you don't necessarily care about the ordering of the data. So in other words, I'm not worried about the merging to make sure, Dan, that if you typed and I typed that we don't type over each other. And that's where WebSockets, it can be a little more challenging. And of course, there's other fallbacks in addition to WebSockets too. But Dan, why don't you walk us through, I know there's some other options as well that can handle some of this merging of the data. Sure, so I wanna tell you a little bit about the Fluid Framework. And this is a this is something we built to try to solve this collaboration problem. And it's it's built on WebSockets for real-time communication. Um, but it's a, it's a client-side library that you use to structure the data, model your own data, so that you really only have to worry about the, the user experience in your client web app. And so you, we, the Fluid Framework comes with a set of data structures. Uh, one of them is the shared map that we'll be talking about a little bit later. And then that library and that runtime are talking to a service that are keeping the clients in sync and then also storing uh, the data from the collaboration session. And so then when multiple users enter the session, now each of them are making changes to these data structures. And each of those edits is modeled as an operation that is sent to the service. And then the service's job is to stamp that with a sequence number and broadcast it out to all the other clients. We call this total order broadcast. And so each client is guaranteed to have the same operations in the same sequence so they can use that information to render the same experience. Yeah, and I kind of think of that, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's almost like a, you know, we're used to Git merges for files, but in this case, it's almost like a Git merge on all of the clients. Yeah, now, it's a lot like that. When it comes to that, Dan, what do I need to do as a developer on the server side though for this? Well, that's the great part. And there does need to be a service, but none of your code is running on the service. There's no business logic on the service side. So it's really a utility uh, that, we provide that is really just, it doesn't know anything about those operations. It's just making sure that all the clients have them all. So yeah, it sounds like basically the data flows into the service, it stamps them with a ordering, total order broadcast, and then the clients then are responsible for the merging. So I would guess the latency on that must be pretty phenomenal. Oh yeah, it's super quick. Because the service isn't really doing anything with the data, it can turn that right around. And so that's that's why we came up with this architecture is to so that we could build really snappy uh, collaborative experiences on the client. Excellent. Well, tell us a little bit more about the Fluid Framework then, Dan. 
Yeah, so the Fluid Framework is something we came up with here at Microsoft to power our next generation of collaboration experiences. Um, we made a decision to open source this so that we want the core technology to be out in the open so that people can contribute to it and so that people can take advantage of it in their own applications as well. Um, like I said, it handles the sync and the storage. And because uh, we're really focused on the data sync, uh, it, it can work with any view framework. And so you'll see a lot of our examples are built in React because we know React, uh, but it works with Angular, Vue, you know, whatever you want to use. Well, and that's for me, that's a big deal because it on a given day I am working with maybe React, but the next day I'm working with Angular and it really changes. So pretty much as long as you can use JavaScript, you could right. integrate this in, right? Yep. Excellent. So let's see the Fluid Framework in action and take a look at some code uh, in a brainstorming app that we've built. Sounds great. So to start off, this application is gonna be able to allow Dan, I, and really anyone else. We have three people. I added myself twice, so I'm gonna be the second person, but Dan is also in here. So what we can do is we can hit add note. And what this will allow us to do is drag this around. And you'll notice as I drag it around, you'll automatically see it. So I'm gonna say, Dan, if we were, I don't know, maybe planning a team get together, I'm gonna say, let's go to the movies. But Dan, feel free to add, you know, whatever you want to add. And I'll add on my number two over here. I'll add something as well. There's Dan adding two. And I don't know, go drive cars, something, those little cars, maybe. And then you'll notice that Dan made it a different color. And as we do that, instantly, we'll see the changes. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, go to movies is great but we can't really talk at the movie. So you know what, Dan, I like your idea better. So I'm gonna vote it. Go ahead, Dan, I think you said you love Putt-Putt Golf, yeah, right? I like that one too. Okay, so you'll notice that that bubbles up to the top here in our selected items, all in real time. And then I also like, you know, go and drive those uh, little mini race cars. That'd be kind of fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that one and you'll see that the votes just sort based on it, but everything's in real time across this application. So I think we're ready to go there, Dan. Or we, I guess we're going to go putt-putt, huh? Looks like it. Okay. Well, let's go into this a little more detailed on the files and talk through these. So we're going to show a React app. But as Dan mentioned earlier, this could be any type of app. Um, a typical create React app is going to have an index TSX. But what we're going to do is instead of scattering the Fluid Framework code all around the React app, might it be better to put that in one place, right, Dan? Yeah, we didn't want the every one of the React components to have to worry about talking to the fluid data structures. So we we just uh, centralized them there in a, in a brainstorm model that can kind of abstract that from the rest of the app. Exactly. So what that'll allow for is now data can flow over. And then from there, it can flow on down into our different components. So we have a brainstorm view here, and then that ultimately is gonna load a note space, kind of a canvas for the notes, which will then load our note TSX here at the very bottom, that component. So now that you've seen that, let's go ahead and jump over to our code. And what we have here is the project, and Dan and I are gonna kind of walk you through those core building block pieces. So first off in index TXX that you're gonna see here, there's really just standard React functionality here, nothing special except for one thing. You'll notice that we have a little async start function and that's because we're gonna call this get fluid container. Now, Dan, earlier you mentioned that the work we do as developers is done in the browser, but we need to communicate to the server, of course. So can you right. walk us through kind of what is this doing? Yeah, so the fluid container is an important concept. It's really the atomic unit of storage and the permission boundary within the, the fluid world. And so at, at, at this point, you are establishing or retrieving a container uh, from the service, which then gives you that container, if you will, uh, to attach your data structures to. Excellent. Yeah, so it looks like from there, once we get our all connected and we get back our resources, we're then gonna go ahead and pass that as a prop down into our brainstorm view. 
Now the brainstorm view is where things get interesting. Um, you'll notice up top that we do have a little bit from the fluid framework, but let's just skip right down to the JSX. And earlier, Dan mentioned this brainstorm model. And Dan, you wanna walk us through here? It looks like we have several components and the models being passed into these. Yeah, like I said, we're keeping the data model, um, you know, separate from the React components, and we just pass it through as a property, um, so we're not polluting this area with all that logic. And then you can also see you have access to the members. That's another uh, fluid concept uh, that gives you access to all the other people that are in the collaboration session. Nice. Um, one thing to add to this is that while we passed it as props here, you could certainly use other options like context or something like that too. Um, but as far as the model itself, this is really where all the action occurs. So I'm going to kind of go right to the top here. And while I'm not going to open package JSON, if I did, you would see a fluid framework package installed. And you'll notice this is what Dan mentioned a little bit earlier, shared map. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Now, this brainstorm model, you'll see it has some different functions here for moving notes and adding notes and setting notes and changing color and things like that. But let's skip on down here, Dan, a little further. Let's go down to right here. And when I first saw this code, when I started working with Fluid a while back, Dan, the first thing that came to mind was as a developer, I've used the JavaScript map object. And it looks a lot like that, right? So walk us through these uh, functions here. Yeah, and that's you know that's one of our objectives with the framework is to make it really approachable to web developers and lean into existing you know, web uh, norms. And so the shared map is meant to behave a lot like a map. And so you can see the you know bunch of gets and sets there. Um, so all you really know is that you're setting data uh, in this in this map object, and you can see we're kind of keying it off of an ID for the note, and we're giving it a you know a, a name um, and a value. But then once you set that value, then you're kind of handing it off to the Fluid Framework runtime, and it takes care of keeping that in sync across all the rest of the clients. And so all the other clients are, are seeing that as a change in the data in that um, shared map. Right. And that's what I love about it. The simplicity is it's very analogous to the map we're used to in regular old JavaScript, but yet this is able to communicate to that service you mentioned. Now, you mentioned that other clients then are going to get this from the service. So let's talk through how that aspect would work. So if we go down to the bottom here, you're going to notice there's a set change listener. And we're going to take that shared map object and basically subscribe to a value changed. Mm -hmm. Now, that just sets it up. But let's jump into this note space. This is where the notes are actually rendered on the canvas that you saw earlier. And let's come into this area right here, Dan. It looks like we have a, a use effect because we're doing React in this case, but it looks like we're doing that change listener right here. So kind of walk us through what's going on up here with the notes and things as that gets called. Well, sure, this is just where we you know, listen for those changes and then re-render the notes. So you can see, you saw when we were both collaborating that those notes were updating in near real time. Even as, I, as we each typed, you could see the changes being applied. Yeah, exactly. So this is basically just setting the state for React. It then iterates through the notes and renders those. But we know about different changes to the Fluid model through this kind of subscription here, if you will. And then we unsubscribe. So that's the general walkthrough on what's going on with this code. So basically, as a quick review, we set up the connection. That's being done right here. And then from there, we just abstract all our code out into a model, and then we can pass that model around our app and synchronize it. And this can be done again, as Dan mentioned, in Angular, Vue, React, or whatever we'd like. Excellent. So Dan, uh, tell us a little more about the service aspect. I know we there is a local option, right, for development. But when it comes to remote development, and we want to do it for real, I should say, what's going on there? Yeah, like I said, there is, you know, the, the service is necessary but it's not something that we want you to have to worry about. And so we have an Azure Fluid Relay service available. Uh, this is something that you would just provision in your uh, Azure portal. Um, and it comes with the th everything you would expect from an Azure service in terms of uptime and scalability and performance and that kind of thing. So you really don't have to worry about it. Um, and then you just take that connection information and put it in your app. 
and you have easy access to the relay service to keep your apps all in sync across the clients. Uh, this is something we've been working on for a little while. Um, we talked about the private preview at Build, and it is just about to go into public preview. Excellent. I love it because the setup is super simple, and mm -hmm. then it's just up to you to write the client side fluid code, and you're off off to the races. You can do this. So, what about uh, information? How can we, you know, learn a little bit more about this? Sure. So the fluidframework.com is really the place to start. Um, so that's kind of the, the homepage for our open source project. Uh, there's lots of good um, content there, documentation that'll get you up and running, help you understand how these distributed data structures work. Uh, we've got another repo out there, Fluid Examples, uh, where you can see things uh, like the simplified version of this brainstorm app and some other examples you can uh, pull down and easily get up and running quick to see how Fluid works. Nice. And then when you're ready to go deeper, what can they do? Good question. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to go to the open source options out there, um, obviously the packages, I mentioned some of those a little bit earlier, those are up on NPM, but you can actually go to the GitHub fluid framework repo and you can see what's going on for real. You can contribute. They certainly welcome contributions. And then if you want to just get to the demo that we just ran, um, you can get to a simplified one, as Dan mentioned a little bit earlier, but if you wanted to get the one that Dan and I used, you can go to this link here, this aka.ms link. So with that, Dan, uh, I'm super excited about adding real-time data collaboration into apps because I just think there's so many scenarios out there. Mm -hmm. So thanks for uh, joining me here. It's been great talking with you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks. With that, let's turn it back over to April.